Right, so um, update and some decisions on where I am with this rod. Um, so I've stripped all of the rings off it now. Um, I haven't completely cleaned up. I just wanted a little bit of a sand, but that's okay. And the handle. So previous video, there was still all that cruddy glue on there. I've actually cleaned it all off now, or well, pretty much all of it off. And the reason was because I bought these finishing rings from um, Guides and Blanks, and I ordered them with a diameter of 18 mil, uh, internal diameter of 18 mil. When I measured this up, uh, I measured it up at a narrowest point at 18 mil. And then when I tried to slide these things down to just figure out exactly what I was going to do, I realised that um, they weren't going to go over the glue. So I've spent a good hour um, trying to get, and I guess now successfully getting all of the glue off. And so I ended up literally heat, and I I I, I traded up from using you know this crappy old uh, CD to the trusty blunt putty knife and it was literally a case of heat scraping cleaning it up and then because every time I, I use my little heat gun of course it's also blowing air and what I didn't want to do was I didn't want to uh, blow all of the scrapings all over the place so it was cleaning up then repeating the process and I've got it to a point now where I can do what I need to do and uh, you know I've played around with a few things and think I've got a plan so talk about that interesting thing um, so this Drennan rod I'm hoping that this shows up okay so um, this era generation of, of Drennan rods quite uh, I, I remember this finish even you know back when uh, back in the 1980s 19, 1990 sorry a couple of my friends had these rods with this where you could see the carbon fiber through like really see the pattern of the cloth and it was almost like a real Drennan trademark I'm not sure if the current models have this but I, I've mentioned before I've got a couple of um, really nice Saban rods but I can't remember what they look like and I'm not going to go out and, 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 and get them and just check them out but um, what's quite interesting is I was cleaned this back scraped it I could actually get this to be like this I'm pretty sure I could do that from a finished perspective yeah so sanding cleaning it right right back and then um, putting some top coat on it and I had originally thought about the idea of a, a typical spinning style kind of two-piece you know where there's a handle and the real fitting and then the handle at the bottom and there's almost bare rod blank in the middle and I was quite interested in doing that and wasn't sure could be caught, could be dew point. Um, and I was a little bit skeptical about whether I could actually clean it back. And I've got to the point where I, I think I could. But this Drennan blank is quite interesting because it actually changes from this like typical, I hope this shows up okay in, 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 in the light and with this camera, the typical Drennan finish, you know, where you can see the cloth. And then it actually ends, you can't feel anything. Um, but it ends and then all of a sudden it goes back to basically a typical wrapped carbon fibre rod finish just here and I'm very much assuming that um, this would then carry on down the, the entire butt of the, the rod to the end where uh, to, the, to the end of the, you know, the, the butt section so even if I wanted to do that I wouldn't get this typical Drennan finish I would get this as a finish, so I don't think that's what I want to do. So um, I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to build the rod handle back up. I just realised I've still got these on there. Let's take take these off. Don't need those anymore. So what I'm gonna what am I going to do? So I'm going to put one of these rings on as a finish. So not really any other reason than to do that so these would go down finish the cork handle like this 
then we would put the what wheel fitting on obviously this needs to be fixed and so forth so that would go like that so sort of buffers up against the court that looks all right yep put another one of these on this section here um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cork and then I'm going to whip up I, I, I need to uncover this a little bit just to find out where the Drenum labeling is I'm going to keep that I kind of feel that's like a nod back to the history of the rod right so I'm going to keep that but you get a bit of so I need to put something here and I just prefer cork over duplon so I bought this prefabricated piece of cork which um, I'm going to cut in half and then that would be to about here I guess yeah. I need to ream it out I reckon that's going to be quite hard. I reckon I need to cut this in half with the idea that I've got two attempts because reaming it out is actually going to make it quite thin to get this internal diameter to, uh, diameter to be um, 18 mil. So it's going to be quite fragile. I'm going to try get it to a point where then that would go on. I'm going to um, sand down the outer diameter the outer edge here just to remove this hard edge just to sort of make it look a bit softer so that will go like sort of to there maybe halfway probably there then I'll put another one of these rings on so that we'll finish it kind of hold it all in place obviously it's going to get glued up anyway I'm not worried about this recess if I need to use it I need to use it because um, I will put a hook keeper on and I'm, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different with this hook keeper I, I've sort of thought about this and I didn't I think uh, I was being a bit conservative previously but what I'm going to do with this hook keeper um, yeah so they open up like this so this piece gets the piece I'm holding gets whipped onto the blank and then this will fold up and down yeah, um, so put this on, you know, sort of here, here, somewhere. But I'm not going to put it on at the normal, immediately where the reel will hang down, which is the, the typical place. I've got this, uh, I really love this Shimano. I've got this Shimano, so, you know, typically a hook keeper will go on you know and hanging down like this with the idea you know you, you hook up into it I've sort of been thinking about it and actually I'm not going to put it if you think this is be like six o'clock right down at the bottom I'm not going to put it at six o'clock I'm going to put it on the side so you know that would be nine o'clock right so following around so this would be three o'clock six o'clock nine o'clock so I'm going to put it here because you know, I fish right-handed. I'm actually left-handed, but I fish right-handed. So it would actually be preferable to hook it up on the side, I think. Just might be a bit easier, right? Don't have to look around and hook it up. I can see. So I'm going to do that. I, I was going to do it on the float rod that I did previously, and I kind of bottled out at the last minute, but I'm going to do it this time. So that's the plan. So I'm going to start preparing everything which basically means yeah I, I'm gonna have a look underneath these um, this mask and tape find out you know where things need to be I'll cut this I'll ream it out 
uh, I need to do it by hand it's going to be a case of you know using a hand reamer and then a rat tail file and sort of get it all ready so that I'm ready to reassemble and then I'll cut back in and we'll talk through where I've got to um, and I guess if, if the court fails my uh, my plan B would be to just use this piece of duplob and I don't need to actually ream this at all I've, I've, I've actually checked it out so I can make some decisions about you know it's slightly tapered so I can cut it where I want to actually and you know and make that fit so you know, if I screw up the cork this will be my plan B so yeah cut back in when I'm all prepared and ready to glue it all up <laughs> 